keeps a helpful smile in every aisle. Dr. Oz is bringing healthy back. Transform your life. Weekdays at 9 a.m. Now, from across the Tri-State, this is KHQA Sports. And tipped up the evening, everybody, and welcome to this sorta edition of Sports Final. As Mother Nature took a big old swipe out of our schedule tonight, but if nothing else, we do know how to salvage in this business, and we've got plenty of quality to help. We will start you off tonight with playoff basketball action on the girls' side. Quincy Notre Dame at home trying to collect another regional title and doing so with the rare luxury of home court advantage, although doing so as the underdog tonight to a good Springfield team that came out ice cold. In fact, Q&D exposed a lot of things early, looked really good, got a heck of a jump start courtesy of this young lady, Olivia Heyer, who was on fire. Call it higher power, if you will. Steve Winwood would like that. Nice take for her, and then a big three. She scored her team's first seven points, and the fans, oh, they were loving it. Dressed up in their pajamas of sorts. Springfield couldn't shoot straight in the first quarter. However, they had a lot of weapons. Kiera Weir, one of them. Nice take for her right there, but still at the other end. How about Olivia Heyer playing distributor first, hooking up with Shelby Connell here, and then touchdown pass at the other end to a completely unguarded Quinta Keating. Oh, it was a big run at that point. 14 to 8 after the first quarter. As big as a nine point lead as Quinta circles and knocks it another jumper, but. In the second quarter, it would be a 9-8 victory in that stanza for Springfield behind Sarah Cross. Point blank range. Q&D, though, kept fighting, kind of scrapping and trying to build the lead. Again, right here, beautiful stuff right there. At the other end, though, oh, check this out. Scoring a plenty to start off. The second half by Miss Heyer. She had 19 points on the game, but in the third quarter, down six. All of a sudden, Springfield comes to life, finds its shooting range. Miss Cross again doing some things, and then Brooklyn Crumb, long distance three in this one. And unfortunately for QD, their season comes to an end as they go ice cold in the fourth. Springfield ends the run. 48 to 36 was your final. The news also not good for the Holy Trinity girls. They ran into the number one team in the state in an absolute buzz on Burlington Notre Dame. Final in that game, 100 to 50 in favor of Burlington Notre Dame. But let's say this today for Tony Johnson's crew: 14 wins this season. That's the team's highest total since 2008. Heck of a season to, to uh, Holy Trinity, and congratulations to them. Bur Burlington Notre Dame moving on by a win by 50. How about we do the boys side of things tonight? Quincy High School at home tonight. Senior night at Blue Devil Gym and a big bounce for everyone in this one early on. Lincoln LB step back three. Kid couldn't miss in the first quarter. He could also distribute a little bit hooking up with Parker Bland and the Blue Devils were off to the hot start in this one. The three pointers falling at least in the first quarter in this one. Not for the rest of the night, but Cameron Gay knocking down a triple here. Then Jacob Job, man, this kid is smooth and fun to watch. Kiss off the glass right there. Good stuff from him. However, Moline, after the ice cold first quarter, kind of got things going a little bit. Big fella McLaughlin inside. Big take for him. Fouled in the process. Still, Quincy Hype would rebuild the lead. Second quarter, not so good. This the end of the first quarter, however. Jacob Job with a three. And then check out Mike Dade to finish the stanza in style to beat the buzzer. Little contortion, checking the clock as he does so. Great maneuver, and that's a clever buzzer beater for that young man. Then Lincoln Elby to start the second quarter good. As I told you, Moline, real strong in the second and third quarter. Made a game out of this fourth quarter, though. The Blue Devils scored the last 10 points of the game unanswered. They end up winning and winning fairly sizably down the stretch. Good win for the Blue Devils. 50-41 to 41 is your final. Not a lot of games tonight in Illinois due to the weather, but we did have one at Brown County. Unity visiting and looking to try to stop the Hornets in this one. How about Darian Drake? Young point guard, freshman, already knows the angles and the parabolas and the whatever you want to call it. The bounces, I guess, for lack of a better word of the gym. Nice finish for him. Adam Donnelly, pretty good night for this young man from Unity. 14 points, kiss off glass to start, and then the jump shot he would hit as Unity building a little bit of momentum in this seesaw affair early in this one. Brown County, though, giving no quarter, at least at this point. How about some Colin Klinging? Good football player, not a bad basketball player either. Kid can finish in traffic. Good stuff from him. Brennan Begaman and company, though, too strong down the stretch. 66-52, your final. Corey Miller not pitchered in this one with 23 to lead Unity to victory. Best game of the night took place at the hangar as McComb beats Monroe's tonight. Damone Doyle, are you kidding me? Bounces home a three-pointer from NBA range, which I'm told was completely contested to give his team the victory tonight. 52-51, Damone Doyle. 
Just wow. Big win for Macomb, and they needed some traction after that loss to Southeastern. Also tonight, Beardstown tunes up for the postseason with a big time win over Route 81 to 46 was your final. Let's take you to the Missouri side of things tonight. Palmyra with a shot to win a share of the Clarence Cannon Conference title to, along with Louisiana if they could beat Highland on the road. Good start for the Panthers in this one. Miles Kite cleaning things up on the inside. Good offensive rebound. Good putback. But Highland trying to pay, play spoiler and Sam Porter was equal to the task tonight. And who doesn't love a good Porter? Sam from the outside knocking down the jump shot. Then Sam Porter from NBA range tonight. Get the long jump shot like his name was Clay Thompson in this one. Good three for him. Trevor Mendy, though, with answers. He can shoot the three and the long two as well. He had 23 points tonight all along the way, passing up Jason Stratton in line to be number three all time as the scoring leader at Palmyra. Then Malik Clay on the inside cleaning up nicely. Then more from Trevor Mendy right here. Steal and check out just the whirling dervish action at the other end. Wow, a couple of big scoop shots, a couple of nice moves for Mendy. The 23 points good, but Highland was undaunted in this one. Finding Mark Clay in the corner, knocking down a three right here. Then more of Sam Porter, as I mentioned, 23 points tonight to help lead his team. You will see Mr. Porter doing it again. And not pictured until later in our highlights, Mr. Austin Richmiller, who you will see finish up the highlights. He had 28 tonight. Ho hum. Another big night for Austin Richmiller. The people of Louisiana love you, Austin Richmiller, as Louisiana gets the outright crown tonight. Doesn't have to share it for the second year in a row. 72 57, big achievement for the Bulldogs. We showed you their big win last night. Congratulations to that group playing some good basketball. Again, not a lot of scores tonight. One to pass along to you for making tonight as the Macon boys beat Monroe City. 71 to 60 was your final there. Girls' side of things tonight. Back over in Ewing, Chris Parsons and the Palmyra Lady Panthers taking on Highland. Haley Wassman, do some work in the inside with a, with a hand in her face. Nice bucket for her. Highland, though, wow, playing strong in this one. Madison Cottrell, nice spin cycle for her. And then check out the fumble Ruski pass right here from Sharni Smith. Just going to set it on the floor. And you know what? Madison Scott's going to pick it up and do work with it. Other end, though, Nicole Krager doing work for Palmyra. This was a really hotly contested game. Palmyra finds a way to win it down the stretch on the road. 47-42 was your final. I mentioned not a lot of scores tonight. We'll give you two. Macon is your Clarence Cannon Conference girls champion, undefeated, and 20-5 and on the regular season to finish. 37-27 your final. Chili Britt leading the way for the Tigerettes in that one with nine points. Also, monster night for Mark Twain's Michelle Epperson in beating Community R6. She not only had the 21 points, 12 rebounds, and six big blocks. I tell you what, it is a quality, quality night at the office for her. Much better picture in Columbia today. We'll take you there for the quarterfinals. Start you off. The Hannibal Pirates on the mat. Weird, weird match in the quarterfinals for Chandler Fowey. Gets the takedown here, but he was penalized three points for scissors across the body at different points and found himself trailing right here. Five to three with 25 seconds left. Gets the takedown to force overtime, though. First period went scoreless, so we go to the two 30-second periods. Starts with him on the bottom. He gets illegally body slammed, so he gets one of those illegal points taken away from him back. Goes up six to five, but again, in that 30-second period, Chandler Foey doing work. He kind of got ticked off at that point and went to work from there. Again, on the bottom, gets up, reverses things, takes an 8-6 to six lead at that point, would end up winning the match 8-7 to seven to bunch his ticket to the semifinals. More on that in just a second. Meanwhile, after Chandler Foey got the win, kind of a strange match as well at 132 for Austin Janes, trying to get out of the quarterfinals and back to the semifinals for the second year in a row. Got the takedown here to build a 2-0 lead and then eventually a 4-1 lead. Had to ride things out, but Austin Janes showing a lot of moxie tonight. Gets the 6-5 win. Most impressive victor during this run in the quarterfinals, Colby Collings at 170, who was absolutely doing work here against Loudon Breedson. He gets the win and advances on. So too does Kyle Muring, and the good news is this, Hannibal fans, four guys, as we take a look at the graphic, four guys all win their semifinals matches tonight. Austin James, Chandler Foey, Colby Collings, and Kyle Muring all headed off to the finals tomorrow. Hopefully, snow permitting, we'll have a lot of coverage for you of state championships from Hannibal coming up tomorrow on overtime. There will be no state championships, unfortunately, in any other state. Will Lucy, with the loss, though he wrestles back on the backside of the bracket, ends up getting a chance to wrestle for third place tomorrow. So Will Lucy moving on. Ashton Myers loses as well today. He ends up moving on as well after losing and then picking up a victory. The news, not particularly good in Southeast Iowa, though we can tell you Chase Sini was the only of our Iowa wrestlers to end up winning their quarterfinal, lost in his semifinal. 
that's got a chance to win for third. Other guys advancing include Harlan Steffensmeyer, Tanner Hawker, Nick Audie, Dakota Shaw, and Ryan Egley, who will all wrestle for seventh. Overtime tomorrow, I don't know what we'll have, depending upon the weather, but it'll be fun. We'll see you at 1030, everybody. We've always had the largest selection and top-notch service, but did you also know we carry all of the top name brands? Sealy Posture